Okay, I'm going to mention something that um, is probably not recommended to be used. Um, it's called du deduplication, and it does, as the name suggests, um, it's a feature whereby ZFS can uh, match identical blocks and create effectively a symlink to um, one copy of that data um, but make it available to any resource that uses that copy of the data. So for example if you had two different files which just happen to have um, data that was sim uh, similar or the same rather ZFS would be able to identify that and it would only store one copy of that block with the identical data in both files and then it would create a link to that one um, block of data and give that reference back to each of those files so it's an extremely efficient way of saving space especially when you've got lots of repetitive data um, the downside to this is obviously if you think about it ZFS has got to maintain a table of all the blocks it's got and the type of data in there and when you're writing new data it's got to try and match um, that new data with any existing blocks to see if there any, is any um, deduplication opportunities and then it's got obviously got to increment that table with that data and as you can imagine the more data there is the bigger the table is there's more searching there is uh, consequently this really does swallow RAM um, I've seen uh, claims on the internet that you need um, a gigabyte per terabyte and I've seen all sorts of figures banded about um, again I'd say if you did want to use this um, do your own tests find out um, what impact it would have with your data uh, you will need a lot of memory. It does start to swallow up memory when you start using it seriously. Um, I am going to do a demonstration on it, on it, but it doesn't really swallow up as much memory as um, it could do if it was a proper chunk of data using you know, terabytes of data. Um, another thing is it can be slow to delete files because with each file it's got to check how many references there are to that block of data. Um, or the blocks that make up that file has got to ensure that it doesn't delete a block of data that may be shared with another file um, so deleting data can take some time with deduplication but I will demonstrate it I have used it in the past until I realize the error of my ways and I don't use it anymore um, I do just rely on compression for gaining extra space um, as I said in the compression video it's almost a, a freebie comp compression with modern hardware um, and it doesn't use a lot of memory it takes a, a minuscule amount of uh, CPU time um, for a great deal of benefit so if you did want to look at getting extra space um, compression is probably the best way to go having said that if you're dealing with lots of highly, un highly uncompressible data you might find that deep duplication is your um, answer to your uh, issues with uh, disk space um, but of course it relies on being able to find uh, similar or, or like chunks of data so it depends like I say it's best if you test yourself with your data with your setup how effective it will be and of course whether you, your system's got enough RAM to deal with it. So the way deduplication works as I say is it stores only one copy of the block and then no matter how many times you write data to the pool um, ZFS will attempt to match the data you write with any existing blocks and where it does find um, duplicates it, it will just store one copy of that data but it could be shared among a thousand files for example so you're getting a really good um, effective compression ratio um, one thing that's worth pointing out is that um, deduplication happens across the pool it's not restricted to data sets so if you create a data set with 
deduplication turn on at the pool, write a load of data, create some um, deduplication blocks, and then decide no, deduplication is not for you, it's too slow, and you turn it off. Any subsequent writes to that data set, or indeed a new data set on the same pool, the deduplication will still be there until the last deduplicated block has been removed, i.e., you've deleted the file. So if you do try out deduplication and you decide it's not for you, but you want to keep your data, the best way to get rid of it after you've turned it off is either restore from backup, destroy the data you've got and restore from backup, or copy the data from the um, deduplicated ZFS data set and recreate it somewhere. I've either recreate it in a separate directory or um, a separate data set. Uh, just just copy it, but the fact that you're recreating the data um, and deduplication is off, it means that you won't be creating any new deduplication blocks, but as soon as you've copied it and you delete the old copy, that's when the du deduplicated stuff disappears, only, f only after the deletion. Again, it's the same as everything else. You can switch modes, for example, compression, turn it on or off, the mode that you're in at the moment is what affects writes after that mode occurs. So if you've got compression on, your future writes will be compressed. When you turn it off, your future writes will be not comp non-compressed, but any historical writes will still retain the state of the compression as they were written at the time. And it's not until you rewrite them or delete them that you get rid of that old state. So that's worth bearing in mind. It happens with deduplication as well. So what I'm going to do here is let's have a look at what we've got here. So I've got my RAID Z3 still active. And I've still got some data on it. So what I'm going to do is I've got a copy of the user share directory there. What I'm going to do now, um, well, I think what I'll do is I'll remove that. I could actually copy another copy of share here, but the data within the share itself might may have stuff that could be deduplicated, so I may even get better benefit by deleting this and starting from scratch. So I'm going to delete that share directory. You saw how quickly that deleted. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm not even in the right directory, actually. That's why that was so quick. Uh, right, so that's more like it. Right, so I'll just wait for that to delete. And then what I'm going to do is to um, set up the deduplication property. So I'll show you that while that stuff is deleting. So Zpool get uh, DDUP, I think it is, test. Ratio. Uh, let's get all. I can't remember what it's called now. Oh, it's on the. That's why I couldn't find it. It's on the uh, Z pool data set. Deed up, yeah, it is deed up. I thought so. So you can see it's off by default. So this is still going. I think what I might do actually is to um, recreate this, might be a better idea to avoid using that um, disk that I'm having problems with. Right, yeah, I think I'm going to crash this out and recreate a new. New pool. And I'll just create a simple um, mirror, I think, with SDB and SDD.
creating a data set and give my user access to it. Okay, so I've got a new empty data set there. So what I'm going to do now is to turn on the deed up on the test oh, test data set. So worth checking that it's actually been set correctly and it's on. So now any data that I write to this partition, ZFS will attempt to reuse any blocks of data that are identical. So let's have a look, see how much we've got 128K there. Let's do a copy of this share directory and copy that in here. And just wait for that to complete. Okay, so that's copied. If I go to this now and do set FS list, you can see it's used. Well, actually, if I go back here and do DF minus H, you can see the same amount of space has been taken up. So it may be there's no deed up at the moment. There wasn't actually anything it found. We can look at the deed up ratio by doing Z pool list. And in actual fact, it has managed to find some savings. So you can see, um, what's that, 4% of the space has been saved. So that's not insignificant. If I now go back here and do another copy of the same data, and call it share XX, for example, and wait for that to complete, we should see um, a, a substantial increase in the up ratio, and we shouldn't see any real increase in disk use space because this is an identical copy of share so basically there should be two copies of share um, but only one copy of the data on the disk so if I do df minus h okay right what it's doing I thought this might actually stay the same it's actually showing us the true data that's been um, allocated on or, or being used by the disk if you like um, or allocated by the pool, but in actual fact we are saving space because you can see the deed up ratio has doubled, exactly doubled. So this could mean that we end up with a used size in theory that's bigger than the size of the pool that we're on, but this would just increase alongside with it. Um, and we can keep on doing this and the size would increase but the space on the disk or on the pool rather will remain the same so we'll go back here you can see in each of these cases the allocated space is only incremented incremented by 20 megabytes and when this completes which it has now it's again only incremented by 19 megabytes, but we've got three copies of the same data on there. DF minus H shows the um, total data as being three times the amount that's on there. So you can see that there is only one copy, but it's being presented to the system as the expanded. Uh, uh, representation of that data, i.e. three copies of the share directory. The more you allocate, so if I was to keep on copying more and more stuff on there, not necessarily the same stuff, it's more and more different stuff that's identical, the um, DDAP table um, will start increasing and mem memory will start swallowing up uh, or being swallowed up by ZFS. Um, and the, the valuable RAM will just start dropping um, because of that DDAP table increasing. So, yeah, it's quite a significant difference to the uh, data on the disk, as you can see. But um, if you use it in angle with you know, terabytes of data, you, you will 
uh, come unstuck and it is quite slow to delete as I said um, if I do a delete on one of these with the visual uh, verbose sorry you can see that it sort of chugs along a little bit as it it sort of has to check to make sure that these files it's deleting aren't files that have blocks that are already in use and bearing in mind these are only tiny files as well imagine if you had a massive file you know several hundred gigabytes it would um, take even long even longer to delete it it wouldn't be a case of just dropping um, a link to the chain of blocks on the disk to to make up that file e each one of the blocks has to be cross-referenced to make sure it's not already in use <laughs> 